Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Breeze, Breezeway Productions' The Breeze, where we bring you the latest in independent films and film festival news, and we're happy to kick off our coverage of this year's 2023 edition of the Sundance Film Festival. I know that you've enjoyed watching our Slam Dance film uh, film interviews that we've had, but now we're starting over on Sundance. So we're happy to have filmmaker Mike Donahue here with us to talk about his short film that will be playing at the festival, Troy. African limit pulls the wild Maybe what you have so far. The walls are very thin. That's it? My crossed out and we can hear you scream fucking day and night. You should put we can hear his TV. Hi. Oh, Troy. Oh, well, that is a big dick name. Mom. Guys, wow. This is unhealthy. Come for me, yeah. How are you, Mike? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing good. Uh, thank you for coming on the show and taking the time. Uh, tell me a little bit about Troy. Yeah, so Troy is about a couple, Taya and Charlie, who live next door to a neighbor who has incredibly loud, raucous sex, like 24-7, always around the clock, nonstop. Wow. It sounds like a fun time for the neighbors, but uh, yeah. did you, do, you li- do you live in uh, apartment living in Manhattan, and then have you experienced that uh, firsthand? I do, I do, yeah. I've lived in an apartment on top of neighbors, you know, for like 12 years in New York. And the, the situation of the film is in part inspired by, you know, like an apartment that some friends and I had for a while where there was a neighbor who did have very loud sex. But the film sort of starts with that initial premise and then like very quickly pushes through that to become about something else. So so tell me about the relationship with the couple that's listening in to the people having uh, hardcore sex. So like, why are they so drawn to it, interested, engaged with it? And like, it becomes a movie because of that story. Yeah, I mean, I think curiosity is like a deeply universal human thing. But for this couple specifically, we meet them at a point in their lives when they're sort of overly comfortable and settled in their routine. And I think a bit of a malaise has kicked in. I think there are people who right now are living life in a very narrow bandwidth of experience. So the highs and lows aren't very high or low. And I think they're both a bit starved for something exciting to wake them up again. And I think that's why they sort of throw themselves into this thing. Is it like a relationship of two people that have lost the passion between them and then hearing this brings it back, kind of? A little bit, yeah. Like, for me, I think they're in a healthy relationship. I think they're just in a phase where there's a bit of a slump. And, you know, I I don't even know that, like, anything is broken between the two of them. But I, I think when they're inspired to start making out and then have sex themselves because they're listening to their neighbor. I suspect that's like a very hot, new, risky, dangerous thing for them. And whether it's because they haven't been having sex or they just live a very sort of like vanilla middle of the road kind of sex life, I think, you know, it's sort of like up for you to fill in the pieces. Sure. So how did you find the talent uh, to play this couple whose spark has kind of gone out? Uh, did you do casting calls? Were they friends in New York or, or how did We that did it. Out? We actually wrote this short with almost all of these actors in mind. They're all folks that I know from the theater. So Adina Versen, who plays Taya, and Dana Delaney were both in a play that I did in New York a couple of years ago, written by the writer Jen Silverman. Mike Braun is an actor I know from grad school who I've wanted to work with for years. Dylan Baker was the first director I ever assistant directed for when I got out of school. Nice. Okay. So everybody sort of knew each other from past, uh, you know, interactions, which is, which yeah. makes the set kind of very homey since it's very intimate and people already have that relationship before they go into it. Uh, so this will be playing at Sundance Film Festival this year. Do you know when and where uh, the film will be playing at the festival? We have our premiere on the Friday. It's early in the morning. It's like a 9 a.m. in uh, Park City. And then we have our Salt Lake screenings on Saturday and I believe 
Sunday. And then we have another screening on Monday. But the whole festival schedule is up on their website. We're also part of their virtual programming. So if you're not out in Utah, uh, you can get tickets to the virtual offerings and watch us that way too. Awesome. Uh, are there any social platforms where people go to check out uh, any more updates on Troy? Uh, there oh, are not. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to my Instagram, you can find things when we announce that. Sure. Um, I, I think we'll be on we'll be hosted on a platform later this year, but we we can't say what it is yet. Okay, no, that's good. That's good. Yeah. More eyeballs on it is is the uh, uh, a lot of goals for uh, independent filmmakers, and that the fact that you're kicking off uh, I, is this your world premiere that you're going to be having at Sundance. It's actually not. We premiered at Tribeca this past year, and then we've gone out, like, we played Outfest at the Ford earlier this year. We've done around 30 festivals at this point. That's pretty good. Well, to add Sundance onto your uh, on your belt right there as another notch is a pretty great thing to have. Uh, I so feel very lucky. Yeah, I, I think that it's it's awesome to see, and we do hope that our audience is able to tech, check out Troy, uh, which will be playing on the digital platform as well as having its premiere in Park City and Salt Lake City. So if you're around to check it out, please do. And I want to thank Mike Donahue, uh, director, for coming on the show to talk about your film, Troy. Thank you so much.